Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to Life Church this morning. I want to invite you guys to stand up with us and worship with us. Uh, we're here to worship the Lord. Amen.
we bless the Lord this morning. We thank him, Lord. And we just, you guys can be seated this morning. Amen. They say you are an all-consuming fire. The Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, good and forgiving and living in your love that stretches from everlasting to everlasting. They say you give strength to the weary, increase the power of the weak, and bring the dead to life. You father to the fatherless, home for the homeless. You king of kings and lord of lords who created the cosmos without losing count of the hairs on my head. They say you are God. And when I think about you, God, I ask, what if all the things they say are true, God? What if the songs we sing are more than a metaphor? What if Bible verses are more than a cute Twitter bio? What if when we pray, we're not just talking to ourselves? What if it's all more real than our current definition of reality can contain? What if it's all true? What if you're gracious? What if you're good? What if you're not meant to be understood? What if you give peace? What if you have mercy? What if you're a well drawing life for the thirsty, humble and fair? What if you care? What if you're here and we're unaware? What if you're holy? What if you know me? What if it's true? Jesus Christ was your only son. What if he's the one given for all to break down the wall? What if your call is for me to be free and to see a new reality? What if you're the key? What if you're the way? Ancient of days, El Shaddai, Adonai. What if you are, I am? What if you are? What if you could change me? Let your love rearrange me from the sin that estranged me to a savior who claimed me. And even though I can't see you, what if I need you? And I know you will just be you while I sit here and ask, what if? What if? Believing that God, we're here, believing that God is the truth. Amen? Amen. Well, we're so glad you're here today. I don't know exactly what uh, your need may be this morning, but before we go any further, I want to pray for your needs. I believe that uh, we serve a mighty God who cares for us. He cares for you. And you may not think so at times. You may think that it's not maybe possible that he could think about you. But you're not a number. You're a person. And he knows your needs. He knows exactly what you need. And, you know, one of the things that we need to do is be able to lift each other up in prayer. I need people to pray for me. And believe it or not, you need people to pray for you. If there's anybody here that says, Pastor... I need prayer. All you're going to do is I want you to raise your hand because we want to pray for you. We don't need to know what's wrong, but all over this place, I want to show. There you go. There you go. It may not be. There you go. Now, here's what I want you to do. It's where you are. I want you to bow your heads, and I want you to go to the Lord in prayer. As I pray for you, I want you to believe, just like what this, this uh, video was showing. What if it's true? What if he would answer you today? What if he would answer you? I want to pray for you. Father, every single person that's in this place today, not only here, but those that are watching us through uh, online, there is a special need. They raise their hand all over this auditorium. There is a special need in their life. God, they've been crying for you to answer them. Some maybe a whole month, weeks, days. 
And they've come to the place believing that, God, what if you were to answer their prayer? What if you were to be able to do the miracle that they've been asking for? What if, Lord, if the Word of God says for us to believe in you that it would be true? Let your will be done. I don't know their needs. I don't know whether it be a physical need. It may be an emotional need. It may be a financial need. Whatever need it may be, God, we come to you as a family. Father, I thank you and I praise you. We hand it over to you that, God, that you begin to do a miracle, that you begin to do what is right. For we honor you today. Now I want all over this place, I want you to start thanking the Lord and believing that he's answered your prayer by faith. By faith, begin to say, God, I, I've been praying for you and I thank you. Thank you, God, for supplying our needs. Thank you, Father, because you've already provided the finances that we need. Father, I thank you because you've provided the healing that we need. I thank you that, God, because you, what, we've been seeking joy and peace in our lives. Thank you because you've already provided this. Lord, that by the time the service is over, everything's going to be taken care of because I trust in you. That all those chains that have bound us no longer have us captive. But God, we are we surrender everything to you. To God be all the glory. 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 Oh, for we honor you today and we give you glory. If you believe that God has answered your prayer, give the Lord, uh, the Lord a hand clap of praise and worship and believe that God God, you have been faithful. Hallelujah. God has been good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, before, I was going to say, before you get seated, but you're already seated, do me a favor. Would you, would you stand and would you just kind of go around and greet somebody and, and just give you an opportunity to be able to greet just someone? Would you greet somebody? something special this morning. We have a baby dedication. Amen. And uh, I'm going to ask the parents if they would come and uh, if they would come. Parents of our casa. Amen. Amen. You just stand right here. Well, just come on up. Come on up right here. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Hi, little one. God bless you, lady. Beautiful. You know, one of the greatest things as a pastor is dedicating children unto the Lord. And that's what we want to do today. Hallelujah. As we know that this is a gift from God. As a matter of fact, in Psalm 127.3 says, Children are a gift from God. And they are his reward. The Lord has rewarded you with a beautiful child today. And what you're doing today is one of the greatest things that any parent could ever do, is be able to dedicate back to God. The Bible tells us in Scripture, and it gives us great examples of this. The Bible says that Hannah brought the baby Samuel to the temple to be dedicated to God. Mary brought Jesus to be presented to the Lord. And many children were brought to Jesus to be blessed by Jesus. Now, to you, congregation, I want to remind you that God ordained the family to be divine or a divine institute since the beginning of time. The children are the inheritance that God has entrusted to parents to care for. 
From here on out, the responsibility of the parent under God and society is to pray for their children. We today give witness that Jesus is Lord and King over our lives and the lives of our children, children and these children that are to be presented to the Lord. Now to you parents, yes, give her a microphone. She's singing already. But to you today is this. You must realize your responsibility you have to educate, to teach, to exhort your children in the fear and obedience of the Word of God. It does not stop here at the altar presenting this child to the Lord. Yet, it is the beginning of her journey. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions, and all you're going to do is respond, yes, we will. In front of all these witnesses, you're going to make a promise that you, as you dedicate this child, that this child is going to be guided in the, in the, in the journey and in the, in the road where this child should go. Do you promise before this congregation and to the Lord that you will do your part as parent and that you will you take full responsibility to raise this child that belongs to God in the way that is pleasing to the Lord? Do you promise to teach this child to the fullest how to walk daily with God? Do you promise to instruct this child to know Christ as uh, her Lord and Savior? Do you promise to be the best example in living a Christian life? Do you promise to present this child in solemn, sincere dedication? Do you promise to raise this child in the doctrine and in the teachings of the Word of God? And do you promise to raise this child in the ways of the Lord? For as much as you have promised before God and this congregation to dedicate this child to God, as you have affirmed this with your own words, I exhort you to dedicate yourselves to this sacred obligation with wisdom, perseverance, and holy devotion. Today we present this child to the Lord. Amen. This is the fun part. Come on. Isn't she great? She wants to make sure that when I pray for her, that the person that is praying for her is real. Amen. Such a beautiful child. Would you bow your, I'm going to ask you, would you stand? Let's dedicate this child. You know, the most beautiful thing. Um, I've, had, I've had parents that said, Pastor, you know, we didn't grow up in church, and my kids are already older. Can you, can you still present them to the Lord? I said, sure. It's just going to be difficult for me to carry them. <laughs> but I think it's one of the most wonderful things of us dedicating children to the Lord. And I want you to know, parents, that this is just the beginning. You have a great responsibility. This child doesn't know any better, but it's only going to know what you teach it. And it's important as parents. Teach her to pray. Teach her to believe in God. Not only teach her these things, but be great examples of bringing her to church. That she be involved, that Jesus would be the Lord of her, of her life. In her room, in her room, pray and worship God, that she would feel the presence of God. This is a special little girl. You know what I do? I pray for every child. They have a special anointing and a special calling in their life. You want to stay with me, huh? Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I am so grateful for this beautiful little child. In my arms is a child that's a gift that you've given these wonderful parents. Lord, it is an honor for me to be able to dedicate this beautiful child to you. And Lord, I just ask of you this very moment that you would be able to place your hand of protection over this child. That Lord, as she dedicated to you, that God, no harm come to her. 
whether it be physical, whether it be emotional, whether it be spiritual, whether it be mental, that you would place your hand upon her life. Lord, help her to grow up to be a child that would fear you. I pray for the parents, Lord, that they would be able to be that example, that the promises that they made, it wasn't just words, but that they would keep their promise. And Father, we just pray right now that you would do a miracle in this family. We dedicate this beautiful child to you. In the name of Jesus, we dedicate our, our casa, Dana, Dorcas, to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're precious. You're precious. <laughs> Thank you. I have a little a certificate that I do want to give to you. This is a little certificate that uh, we remember so that when she grows up, she'll realize and remember the day that she was dedicated to the Lord. To Jesus. Amen. Here we go. Yeah, let me take a picture. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, guys. Beautiful. You may take your seat. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a blessing. You know, there. I've been doing this for lots of years. As a matter of fact, there's been children that have been dedicated that have grown up already, have gotten married, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they're having children of their own. The only thing I dislike about that is it makes me older. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to we're gonna ask the ushers if they would come. We're going to prepare to give to the Lord, but prior to that, I just want to make some quick, quick, quick announcements. If you have not gone out to vote, I don't think you can vote now. I think you've got to wait till Tuesday. Uh, I think they've closed the early voting. But look, I want to challenge you. We are not here to do politics, but I, I do want to encourage you to go out and vote. If you haven't gone out to vote and you need some information, right in the back of the Welcome Center as you're going out, there's some information that you might want to take to read over. It's very important uh, that you read and that you vote. Amen. And uh, also... There is a fundraiser that is happening for the Abilene Dream Center tomorrow night. Now, I know that some of you may not be hockey uh, fans, but they're trying to bring hockey back into Abilene. And one of the gentlemen who has really uh, gotten to know the guys from the Dream Center uh, owns a business, and he wants to bring back hockey. And so they're having a uh, high school game at 7 o'clock, and then it's Abilene versus San Angelo, which starts at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. It's at Cal Young Park. Now, it's, it's not ice hockey for now because there's no ice, but, they, but they'll do, a, um, a, yes, rollerblading. But what they're doing is that all the funds that they raise are going to go to the Abilene Dream Center. Amen. And look, you, don't, you say, well, I'm not a hockey fan. But at least go and support. Just go over there. Amen? Now, here's what they're going to do. They're going to have the little hockey pucks that they're going to sell. And, uh, and the people that go all from the community are going to go there. They're going to sell. And all that is going to go to the Abilene Dream Center. And then at the end, whoever gets closer to, I don't know, I think it's the center. If they get clo whoever gets close wins maybe a television that may be winning. All right? So uh, won't you support the Abilene Dream Center? Would you go? You might, you, oh, you might like it. Amen. Uh, you may say, well, we've got prayer. Yes, we do have prayer. But some of you don't even come to prayer, so might as well go over there to Cal Park. You laugh because you know what I'm talking about. Amen. So since I don't come to prayer, I'll be at Cal Park. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. I tell you what, tomorrow night, we all want to be at Cal Park. Prayer, prayer is going to be canceled because I want us to meet at Cal Park. Now, some of you that are very, very religious and very really want to pray, and you, you say, Pastor, you, should even, you shouldn't even uh, cancel because we should pray. Well, I'll tell you what, God's everywhere, so why don't you go pray at the park while you're over there supporting. It's out in the open. God could hear you better. Amen. 
But do that. Would you do that tomorrow night? It starts at, uh, it starts at 7 p.m. Guys from the Dream Center are going to be there. We're going we're gonna to be there to support them. Hopefully, the community will get involved. It's being advertised in the community. Uh, and uh, so we are excited to, to, to do that. Also, if you are part of the Servant Tier, if you're a servant here, if you've been serving in a ministry in this church, we want you to uh, sign up at the Welcome Center. Uh, and uh, there at the Welcome Center, uh, it's, uh, it's for dinner. We're having a special dinner, appreciation dinner, next Sunday. And we want you to sign if you are involved in ministry. We need to know how much, how many are going. So please, it's important to do that. Amen. And also, I don't know... Manny, can you bring one of those boxes of, of gift cards real quickly? This is a fundraiser that it is for the, the Dream Center, one of the ladies that does uh, uh, the fundraising for schools. She really uh, fell in love with the Dream Center. She said, I've never done it for, a, for, for, for anybody else but the schools. But she said, I felt in my heart. And what she's going to do is if uh, sh the, the box that you have, you have to keep the boxes. There are several boxes there. And in these boxes, they have all kinds of cards. There, there's 30 cards here. Uh, it has for different occasions, birthdays for kids. There's blank. Uh, which ones are those, Mom? It is um, for birthdays, thank you, blanks, whatever you want. And there's 30 of them, so it's $30 a box. You can keep it, you know, and, uh, and all the monies is going to go, and she's going to give a percentage back to the Dream Center. And so if you are interested, they're going to be at the very back at the Welcome Center. We'll have somebody over there. And what you do is you look at them, you order them, and uh, she's, she's willing to do that for the Dream Center. So would you support the Abilene Dream Center? We are in very, very much need, and you would do that. Okay? All right? Say amen. amen. Now that we got all the unspiritual things, now we're going to get back to the spiritual Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to go with me to, to Exodus chapter 35. In Exodus chapter 35, I want to read a scripture. And found in verse 20. Now, God had given instructions to Moses to be able to build a tabernacle. But how many of you know that without building something, you need finances to build it? Amen? Now, here's the thing. Chapter 35 of Exodus, verse 20. Then the whole Israelite co community withdrew from Moses, Moses' presence. And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved, came, uh, moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent meeting for all its service, and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, uh, earrings, uh, rings, and ornaments. And they all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everything that they brought, they brought to the Lord. And here's what I, wanna, I want you to understand, church. How many of you are grateful that God has blessed you? We are, God has blessed us. And listen, God never takes away from you. What God wants to do is he wants to give you. And he asks you not because he's in need, but he asks you because he wants to bless you in every aspect. Would you be a blessing? Would you bring an offering to the Lord? Would you consider? And some of you, if you don't know, and saying, I've never done this, the Bible tells us in Malachi, trust me, trust me. See if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing over you. How many believe God? Then let's, let's be able to give to the Lord. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to give us today. And I'm asking you today that, God, we would give, not because there is a need, and you know there is, but, Lord, I pray that these people, these wonderful people, would give out of their hearts and that, God, it's an action of gratitude. And I thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you bless the Lord? this morning.
moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Let's worship him together. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you.
worship you, we Lord. We came to worship you, God. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you.
blessed be Jesus. Come on, somebody, make a little noise. Thank you, Father. <laughs> That's who you are. It's kind of like that video that was saying, what if it was true? What if it was God? What if God really, whatever the word said, is true? And let me tell you, we have nothing to lose, amen, but everything to gain. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You may take your seat this morning. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful presence of the Lord. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get fed. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, singers. Thank you. Um, what a, you know, what a wonderful group we have of musicians. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And singers and their dedication every, every week. Amen. And you know what? Some of you are singers and some of you are musicians and you're not using it for the Lord. Amen. You need, to, you need to come and use it for the Lord. All right? All right? Now, remember what I said. Some of you are singers and some of you are musicians. Not some of you that think you're singers or musicians. Because that's a lot of difference, brother. Come on now. You know? I mean, some of you sing in the shower and the hot water turns cold. I mean, that's pretty bad. Amen. <laughs> well, this morning, I want to I wanna be able to talk to you. Uh, that God placed something in my heart. You know, we, we are coming, this month is one of the most beautiful months that I enjoy. And of course, it's fall. As a matter of fact, today, praise the Lord, another hour of sleep. Amen. Wasn't it wonderful? Don't you, don't you wish you could turn your clock back every, every time, never forward? If anybody with me? We, we ought to take it and see if we could vote every time. We'll turn it back, 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 back. I kind of like that extra hour. Um, and I, I've got to make sure I change all the clocks, uh, because if I don't, then I get in trouble. Amen. Well, this morning, uh, you know, just talking about gratitude should be your attitude. And uh, knowing that this month, we're coming to the month of Thanksgiving, uh, or the days of Thanksgiving, the weekend of Thanksgiving, and I just enjoy this. But you know what, what's ama what amazes me is this, that November sometimes is forgotten, and people jump to Christmas. I mean, if you go to all the stores, they already have the Christmas stuff up. And, uh, you know, to me, I, you know, we tend to realize and, and that uh, Thanksgiving is just as important. And I, that's what I want to speak to you. Again, the objective of this message, or the, I want to talk to you these, these uh, Sundays, is to have an attitude of gratitude for what has been given to you and done for you. But also to have the same attitude for what you have given to others and what you have given. Did you know that Thanksgiving is not just what I receive but what I give? Did you know that every single day it ought to be not just what I get but what I give? Thanksgiving is giving. And uh, I believe that I want to challenge you today, and I want to be able to help you to be able to say, you know what, I am so grateful for what I have. Sometimes we are ungrateful of what we don't have, but we ought to be grateful for what we do have. Now, Thanksgiving is the act of giving thanks. Now, there are three words that I want to share with you, the expression of thanks and the celebration of appreciation. So in other words, Thanksgiving has action, has expression, and has celebration. Did you know that when someone receives something, they express and they celebrate? If somebody does not express or celebrate, maybe they are not thankful. And I want to be able to challenge you today that we are so grateful for what we have. And we may not have a lot of things, but what we do have, we ought to be grateful for. And maybe God has not given us more unless we learn to take care of what we have. Sometimes, if we don't take care of what we have, God isn't going to give us more. And we think about how God can give us more, and we pray for God to give us more. But God is trying to tell us this. God is trying to tell us you ought to be grateful for what you have. Amen. Now, um, there's another attitude that I kind of want to uh, talk about. But before we get into that, it says gratitude should be your attitude. Go with me to Matthew chapter 18, 
And when we go to Matthew chapter 18, it gives us a story there. <clears throat> and it is a, it's a story, the parable of the unmerciful, unforgiving um, servant. Now, when you, when you have that gratitude or when you have the, uh, that attitude of gratitude, you will always say thank you. You will always be a person that will say thank you to people. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that ought to be uh, every, every part of our lives, every single day. You see, but the other, before we go to, to the scripture, there is, a, there is another attitude, which is the attitude of ingratitude. Now, the attitude of ingratitude is unexpressed gratitude. Now, I want you to understand this, that sometimes people will tell you exactly what they feel or how they feel by the way they act. If you come, if you get around people and you know that they don't want you around, they don't even have to say anything. Just by the way they act, they just, you know they don't want you around. I mean, when you come around, you know they're not saying welcome, right? If it, you know exactly when somebody's, you know that they are happy, they're everything, the expression. And so we have to realize that it even, even with our gratitude, when we come and we're able to, that's why when we come to worship God, it's an expression. You know, when we jump up and down and we praise, it's a celebration. We're grateful for God for what he has done. We express it. There is an action when we give to the Lord. Now, let me tell you something. I have fun in church. You know, I jump up and down. I do whatever I feel good. As a matter of fact, listen to me. You could, you could get in shape worshiping in church. You don't have to go pay a gymnasium to get, to, for anything to get in. Just come to church and worship God, and you'll be in shape. Amen. And instead of paying the gym costs, you could give your offering to the Lord. Always about money. Well, let me tell you, I had a preacher one time that said, we're not in it for the money, but without the money, you can't be in it. Now, it's ingratitude. The word ingratitude is the state of being ungrateful and unthankful. It is a lack of appreciation for which has been done or given. Forgetfulness or a poor return of, uh, for kindness received, it is also unexpressed gratitude. And, I, and, you know, sometimes God notices if we're grateful or if we're not grateful by the way that we act. By the way that we act to others, by the way that we act towards God. And I want us to get out of that attitude and feel like, hey, everything is owed to me. Everything, I, I, it's about me. Get out of that mentality and saying, God, whatever I have, I'm grateful for what you've given me. Now, some people have more than others, but there's a reason why. But what I have, I ought to be grateful for and say, God, thank you for what I have. Now, Ingratitude, the attitude of ingratitude does harm an individual because it leads them to self-destruction. Now there's a quote that says, an ungrateful person is like a hog under a tree eating acorns but never looking up to see where they come from. It's oink, 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 you know? Just me, 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 me. Whoever gives, gives. You know, it's amazing. People that are ungrateful. There's another one that says this. Ungrateful people complain about the one thing you haven't done for them instead of being thankful for the many things you've done for them. Now, that, let me tell you a little story. I remember when I was, a, I was assistant pastor at one of the churches. Pastor told me, he said, I got a phone call from a lady, and I want you to take her a box of food. And I said, sure, pastor. He said, try to find food for her. So I found food for her. I took a box. I went over there where, the, where she was and knocked on the door. And she said, hello? And well, I said, hello? And she came out and she said, yes? I said, are you the lady that asked for the food? She said, I sure am. She goes, I go, here's your box. I said, our church was willing to give, give this to you. And uh, she said, well, she looked at it and she looked. And she, I don't want none of this. And she threw the box in my feet. You see, I, packed, I picked up the box. As I left, I turned around and I said, don't ever call the church again. You are very ungrateful. You may think about it and say, you know, how, how can it be? But there are people that have an attitude 
of ungratefulness. And God's people ought to be a people of being grateful of everything that they do. You see, because I, I just kind of want to give you the characteristics, how you can determine one who is ungrateful. First of all, an ungrateful person, his characteristic is that he's always inconsiderate. He's always inconsiderate. The second one is he's always thoughtless. He doesn't think about anybody else. The third thing is that he's always ungrateful. Another characteristic of one who is ungrateful is he's rude. They're all rude. As a matter of fact, uh, I've met so many people that have been rude that they are very, very ungrateful. Another one is unappreciated. They are never appreciated. They don't appreciate what they are. As a matter of fact, there was a man that went to the post office. And he went and he asked the person that was at the post office. He said, would you help me, sir? And he said, sure, what do you need me to do? He said, I want to send this card off. He said, would you please write, because I can't write very well, would you write what I... And so he said, yes, sir, I'll take the time. So he began to tell him what he wanted. And so he started writing. The postmaster started writing and all that. After he had done, he read it back to the man, and the man said, yes, it sounds good. Let me look at it. He looked at the card. He said, would you do me one more favor? He said, what? Would you put a P.S. on there? He said, sure, P.S. He said, write this. Forgive the handwriting. <laughs> Not really. He doesn't say that. But you know what? You find even the smallest things, people are ungrateful. I don't know if you know anybody. Now, I don't want you looking around. But I don't know if you know anybody that is ungrateful. And God is trying to teach us to be a people of having an attitude of gratitude. You see, because of the fact that that's the way that Jesus was. Did you know that God dislikes and he even punishes those who are ungrateful? Let me give you a good example. Israel was constantly crying to God. They wanted help. They wanted to get out of their misery of being enslaved. One day, God answers their prayer, sends a man to get them out of Egypt. When they go out into the desert, it's not the most prettiest place, but he got them out of slavery, taking them to the promised land. But in those times, they could have made it to the promised land possibly in three months. But it took them a long time because they were constantly complaining and murmuring about everything that they had. As a matter of fact, they, they, they would ask where they're going to get fed, what, what water, you know, they need water, the water's bitter, you know, you brought us out here to kill us, I want to go back to Egypt. I mean, everything was a complaining to them. And did you know that everyone from that generation never made it, only two made it to the promised land? You see, God is, God is not interested in those that are ungrateful, but he is interested in those that are grateful. You see, it's the attitude of ingratitude that gets people in trouble. Now, go with me to Matthew chapter 18. Now, when we come to this, it says... Uh, Verse 23, let's go to verse 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began to settle the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Now, 10,000 talents is millions of dollars. Now, I want, you to, I want you to picture this. I don't know how he got himself into the debt, but he got himself in debt millions of dollars. Now, Look what happens. As he began to settle, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he had his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him and, uh, and said, Be patient with me, he begged. I will pay back everything. Now the servant's master took pity on him, felt sorry for him, and canceled the debt and let him go. Now check this out. Wouldn't it be nice that all the debt that we have, we'd get a letter and say, your debt has been forgiven. Huh? That debt that you've had, wouldn't it be wonderful that they would just call you up and say, you know, Mr. Pacino, we would just have mercy on you and pity. You don't have to pay it back. I'd say, oh, praise God, hallelujah. Or am I the only one? <laughs> Me and Manny, amen, are the only ones. We must be the only ones in debt. 
But you, you realize what's going on here. All of a sudden, he owes him money, and he comes and he begs the king, and he says, please be patient with me. I'll pay it back. And I believe that the king, with all his heart, looked at his family, looked at everything that was going to, and he realized, here's what I ought to do. I'm going to forgive you of everything and let him go. Wow, I, you would have thought that after owing millions of dollars, he would have been grateful enough. But look at further what happens to him. <clears throat> it says, therefore, the king, oh, uh, where we are, where are we? Thank you. But when the servant went out, he found one of the fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. That's a few hundred dollars or so. Now check it out. He grabbed him and began to choke him and said, pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. Now, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? And then he says, but he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. Now, what a, what a different story. If I owe, if I owe, I want everyone to forgive me. But if someone owes me because I'm entitled, that's an ungrateful person, feeling like people owe me. And so he says, because you owe me, and he begs, and he says, let me pay you back. He says, uh, give me a chance. He says, no. And he puts him in jail. Now, here's what happened. When the servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant. You are a wicked, ungrateful person. I canceled all your debt of, your, of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? I did it to you. Shouldn't you have that same attitude of gratitude, of forgiving him? And see, we have to realize that there, the, 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 the seven or the six things that I gave you is exactly the characteristic of a person who is ungrateful. Because that ungrateful person is always about himself. Never thinks of anybody else, but he thinks of himself. And then when he's given some things, an opportunity, he complains because he doesn't have what he wants or more. Rather than saying, thank the Lord that what I have. You see, there was one, you know, who complained because he had no shoes until he met the person who had no feet. There's always somebody else, but less, worse off than us, but we ought to be a people. God is trying to show us. And in anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. See, let me tell you how important it is that God has done great things in your life. How quickly we forget what God has done for us. Do you remember when you were out there in the world and when you were out there and you were lost, when you were out there and you had nothing and you were out in the streets, or maybe you were in jail, going in and out of jail. Do you remember all the issues that you had back there? And all of a sudden, we forget those things. And when we forget those things, we become ungrateful. And saying, God, thank you. Because in spite of all the things that I did in the past, guess what? You have preserved me, and I'm here today. That I'm no longer what I used to be. And we recognize and realize that here, all of a sudden, he calls him back and he says, you are so ungrateful. What I did to you and for you, you, didn't, you weren't able to do it to anybody else. You are inconsiderate, you're thoughtless, you're ungrateful, you're rude, you're unappreciative, and you're selfish. Let me tell you something. People don't owe us anything. God doesn't owe us anything. What, he, what we deserve, he gave already, and that was his son and forgiveness of our sins. Amen. Now, here's the thing. Luke chapter 17. In Luke chapter 17, there are 10 lepers. Now, I don't know if you realize the condition of these lepers as they had leprosy. 
they had their own colonies. If they were considered by the priests that they were dirty and that they were lepers, they would be put out of the put out of the town. You could they could not even associate with anybody. If anyone associated with them, then they too would be considered unclean. They could not live a normal life. They couldn't live in the home like everybody else. They couldn't live in the city. They couldn't go to Walmart like everybody else. They couldn't go to the store. They couldn't do anything. They had their own colony. And what they did is they begged. Every time that they could, people would give them food from a distance so that whatever it was, they did not have a normal life. And the Bible says that Jesus is passing by, and as he comes on his way to Jerusalem, there is, there is ten lepers that are living by themselves. Now, the story of these lepers is that every time that they would come near people, they had to warn the people. They had to tell the people that, uh, I'm filthy, I'm a leper. Can you imagine walking and telling people the condition of your life? And everybody would run. Everybody would get away from them because they were unclean. Or they would yell and say, unclean, unclean. Well, that's the way that they were. And all of a sudden, they see they're only the only one that could help them out of this situation. I'm sure that they wanted to be normal like everybody else. They wanted a happy life. They wanted to have a good marriage. They wanted to be able to be with their children and their grandchildren. They wanted to be able to go to work and provide for their family. They wanted to be like everybody else, but they couldn't be. He was abnormal. I don't know, but sometimes when, when we realize and recognize that people that have been lost for eternity not realizing like people are like these lepers separated and they're looking and seeking God. And all of a sudden, Jesus turns around and they yell, have mercy! Have mercy! How many know that desperate people will do desperate things to get whatever they need? I don't know if you've ever been in a desperate situation, but I know I have, and it's not a good feeling. I've been in a situation where I don't know what to do. And it's not easy. And they called on Jesus, and they said, have mercy on us! And you know the beautiful thing about Jesus is that when you call Jesus, he's always there. It doesn't matter whether you're unclean. It doesn't matter whatever you're going through, whatever your situation. God doesn't look at you for all the mistakes you've made. What God looks at you is your heart and saying as you're crying out and saying, have mercy on me. And you know what Jesus does? Jesus turns around and he gives them instruction. He says, you need to go and present yourself to the priest. You know, because there's no way that anybody uh, could be pronounced clean unless they went to the priest. The priest is the only one that could say they were clean or unclean. And the Bible says as they are going, as they are going there, all of a sudden they realize that they are clean. They are clean. They smell like ballast. No, I'm just kidding. They came, and all of a sudden as they, as they realized they were clean, they didn't even reach the priest. They didn't even reach. As they were going, there was a cleansing in their body. And the Bible says that one realized what had happened. One realized that, begin to remember of what they came from to what Jesus had done right then and there. And what happens is that all of a sudden, as he, as he looks at his body, he sees the cleansing in his body, and he turns around and he runs back to Jesus. The Bible says that he gets, and he bows down and begins to glorify God and God, give Jesus thanks. You know what? Jesus sees that. He's a foreigner. Isn't it amazing that sometimes we that have been in church for a long time seem to take things for granted? We've been in church a long time. We just take it for granted. And when someone comes to the altar for the very first time and realizes that it's happy, they look at it and say it's the most precious thing. We don't pray the way we used to. We don't really think serving God is, you know, now we can make our choices of whatever we want. But when he came to Jesus, it was something new that he had been asking for. And Jesus began to ask the question, were there not ten? Were they not ten? Where are the other nine? What happened to the other nine? 
Only one, a foreigner, comes back to realize, to be grateful of what had happened. And it's so funny that we want God to do a miracle, but it goes back to people that are ungrateful. There's so many people that pray they want God to do a miracle, God to change their life, God to do something. And the moment that God does it, you never see them again. They don't pray the way, they, they, they've lost that thing. And Jesus looked at this and he said, wait a minute, I healed or, or I cleansed ten. Where are the other nine? They saw themselves and they were cleansed. And here's the thing. The Bible says that he looks at him and he says, your faith has healed you. Now, I want you to understand the difference. The other guys, everyone was cleansed. Everyone was cleansed. But not everybody was healed. There are times that we come to Jesus every single day of our life, and the Lord does a miracle in our lives, but because we are not that committed and we go back doing the same thing, we're not really healed. And if, if you begin to study the lepers, and a lot of these lepers, they would lose body parts. And when the Lord Jesus cleansed them, maybe that disease stopped. And they saw that they no longer had the disease, but whatever body parts were missing, they were missing. But when the gentleman that came back to the feet of Jesus and said, thank you for what you've done, Jesus said, you not only be cleansed, but you've been healed. Now let me tell you about the healing. I don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but God is a God of healing. I believe that if he lost any parts, they begin to grow back. How many of you know that if he had lost a finger due to the sickness, that he began to be healed completely and his finger would grow out? And say, well, brother, that, that is that is that is crazy. It doesn't really say. No, it doesn't really say. But I know what kind of God we serve. You see, when God heals, He heals. And He gives you complete healing in your life. God wants to do that this morning to your life. And they said, where are the other ungrateful nine? It sounds like a band, doesn't it? The ungrateful nine. <laughs> Starting tonight, the ungrateful nine. Where are they? What are they? They forget Jesus. Those are people that are inconsiderate, that are unappreciative. But I want to tell you something here. The Lord wants you to change and have that gratitude or attitude of gratitude. This attitude of gratitude is about being considerate. Be considerate of what people do for you. Be attentive. Be interested in what people do for you. Be grateful for what they do for you. Be grateful for what God does in your life. Be kind to people. You know, one of the greatest things, and I, I want to I take time to tell you how much I appreciated last week. We had such a great time. And you know, what, you know what I really enjoyed about everything? I enjoyed because every single people came after service and said things, but they said good things about me. Boy, that was a change. You know, it's amazing. I, the reason why I tell you that is because uh, years ago I had a guy come into my office. I didn't know the guy, and he said, Pastor, I want to I wanna apologize. And I said, you want to apologize? Why do you want to apologize? He said, well, I don't know you. And I said, yeah, I don't know who you are. He said, well, I moved into town. Uh, it's been about six months. I moved into town. I gathered together with some other people in town, and you were constantly the talk of the town or the talk of the conversation. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, oh, they just said how you were constantly, you know, this and constantly that, and you were always asking for money, you were money hungry, and you were doing all this and all this stuff, and, and you know, that I thought I was it because of the fact of what we had and all that. And he said, you know, praying one day, I, I learned to hate you without even knowing you. It's okay, I had a bat right next to me. <laughs> no. And, uh, I was shocked. I was shocked. And he said, you know, but the reason why I'm here, Pastor, is because I was praying. And I began to ask the question, why do they hate this man so much? And I began to 
to drive around and I looked and I began to see what God was doing through you. And he said, well, then why is it that those that complain the most are the ones that are ungrateful because they don't have what you have? And that's exactly why. He said, I'm asking you to forgive me. And I said, I forgive you, Lord. Let me tell you something. So it's not really of who I am or what I do. It's the fact that I want to live my life being grateful to God. And every single one of you that said word and that said things uh, last week meant a lot to my wife and I. And I learned something. And I, I said it last Sunday, and I'm going to tell you again. You need to learn to tell people how much you appreciate them while they're alive. We wait until there's a casket right in front, and then we get up and say all these wonderful things about this person and the guy doesn't or the girl doesn't know what's going on. It's right now that people need to hear how, how much you care for them, how much you love them, and how much you appreciate. Don't you be afraid to tell people how much you appreciate. Everyone here has a purpose in life. You need to let them know, I appreciate you. Mom, Dad, I appreciate you. Honey, I appreciate you. Babe, or however you call it, babe. You know, we'll not, we won't go into other <laughs> names. But in, yeah, in, in Spanish, it's vieja and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, I don't know why they tell them that. But, <laughs> but you need to learn to appreciate people that you, that you see constantly saying, you know what, I appreciate you. That's the spirit. That's the attitude of gratitude that they may not ever do anything for you, but you constantly appreciate them. And you know what? The Lord is writing things down. He w you would be the most happiest person of telling people how much you appreciate them. And here's what we're going to do today. I don't know how many of you, and I have, I have felt in my heart, in just a few minutes, I want to pray for, some, for, for, for about 10 minutes, we're gonna, we'll be dismissed in just a few minutes. But where you are, I'm going to ask Brian if you would come, and I want you to bow your head. And I want you to think about your life and what you've come, where you've come from and what God has done in your life. Are you really grateful? And if you are grateful, then maybe we need to repent and say, God, forgive me because I have, I have slacked off and I've been complaining about everything rather than being grateful for what I have and what you've given me. I have had to ask the Lord to forgive me because I have been too preoccupied with my own things. And I'm not being grateful. And I, I want that attitude of ingratitude to be taken away from my life. I want you to spend just a few minutes and I want you to tell God, God, I want you to forgive me. I've, I'm com I've complained about this. I've complained about the food. I've complained about the place. I've I complained this morning because of my parking. I, you know, I complained because of this, and I want you to forgive me. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I am so grateful for, thankful for my wife, my husband, my children, my grandchildren. I, I am so grateful. I am so grateful, Father, for our church. I'm grateful because you're true for your word. I'm so grateful for the life that you've given me. I'm so grateful, Lord, for this beautiful day. I'm so grateful, Lord, because you've always provided protected, Lord. I'm so grateful not only of the things you've done, but I'm grateful for the things you are doing and the things that you're about to do. I'm grateful. Would you do that? Come on, church. You've got to take time to thank him and say, I'm so grateful. Some of you almost died. Some of you could have been in jail and in prison for a long time. Some of you have, have struggled. Today's the day to say, God, don't let me be ungrateful. Don't let me forget where I've come from. Don't let me forget what you've done. Don't let me forget you. Now, as you're praying, I'm going to ask this question. Is there someone here today that says, Pastor, 
I need to change my life. I need Christ in my life. I've been so unhappy. I've been so ungrateful. Things have happened, Pastor, in my life that I've become angry. And I've become ungrateful. And I and some may say I didn't even know that I was ungrateful, but I've I've been complaining, I've been bitter, I've been angry. But I want God to change my life. I want to be a I want to have that attitude of gratitude. I want to change. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. I want to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Now here's what we're going to do. I want you to do this with me. The next step is I want you to come and join me up front because I want to say a special prayer for you. As they begin to to sing a worship song, I want to meet you right here because I want to pray for you. Would you do that? Would you do that? Come on. If you raised your hand, don't be ashamed. Just come on up with everybody else. I want to pray for you. Sometimes we don't want to be ungrateful. But sometimes we judge ourselves and what we have because of what everybody else has. And because we see what everybody else has and I don't have it, I get upset and I become ungrateful. But here's what I want you to know. That every single one of you, God has given you what you have so that you're able to accomplish the purpose he has in you. God will never give you more if you're not appreciative of what you have. We can't have others or we can't, uh, other things, I'm sorry, we can't have other things or we can't have what we've, we've desired in our hearts unless we take care of what we have. That's so valuable. And I don't know if there's anybody here that says, Pastor, I've never had Jesus in my life, but I want Jesus in my life. Is there anybody here? Everybody accepted Jesus because I want to lead you. Now here's what I want you to do. How are you feeling today? Okay. You got a new kidney? Wow. Let me tell you about this young lady. For years, for years, she has battled this. I've gone to see her at a hospital where she, her, it was more death than it was anything. But her attitude was always constantly believing in God. And because of that, I don't know the struggles and why God delayed it. But God never denied it. And we're going to pray that God continue to give you. Come on up here, sweetie. I know you can't. Come on. It's all right. You can hear my voice. I'm right here. Are you sure it's me? I love you. Are you grateful to the Lord? Father, this lady has suffered. She has struggled. And you've given her a new kidney. Now I pray, just like you said to that leper, I pray for healing. Complete healing. Remove those things that hindered her life. That you're with me.
everybody, I want you to place your hand on your heart. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me for being so ungrateful. I've been selfish. It's been about me and not you. Today, I repent of it. I'm truly grateful of what you've done for me and for what I have. What I do have, I deserve. And I promise you, I will take care of it. And I will do what you've asked me to do. So then whenever you want to give me more, you'll give me more. I repent of everything. In Jesus' name. And just stay where you are. There's something that has happened to you, and I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there's something that has happened to you that has caused you to be very angry. You love God, but you struggle with this anger. You struggle every single day. As a matter of fact, you've been talking to the Lord about this anger. The Lord wants me to tell you today that he's heard your cry and that he will remove it if you give him time. Now, I don't know who that is, but I want to pray for you. You are constantly, it could be someone that is standing here or someone that's in the audience sitting, but you have struggled with this anger because of what has happened. I need you to come quickly because I want to pray for you. Now, let me tell you something. God is not a God to judge you in this aspect. But you're here this morning to tell you that he sees your struggle and that he loves you. I don't know one thing of your past, but I know one thing of your future, that God is about to do a miracle in your life. One thing you have to let do is let go so that God can do the things that he wants him to do. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? I don't know what's happened in your life, Tom. But if not, you need to forgive yourself and turn to away from your brother. Let your heart turn away from you. all the things that have injured your life. 